Hello. Our story begins inside the world between worlds. Azra saved Ahsoka, pulling her through a portal just before Darth Vader could cut her down and kill her. The two of them had been walking around this different dimension. There are voices of old and unknown spacing out around them. Ben Kenobi, Yoda, and Kylo Ren among such voices. Some of these moments having happened before, and others having yet to happen. After Ahsoka and Ezra found Kanan's heroic sacrifice, she informed him that despite him saving her, he couldn't save Kanan. If Ezra pulled Kanan out of his death, then Hera, Sabine, and Ezra himself would be killed instead. Kanan made a choice for his friends and family, one that unlike Ahsoka's death, couldn't be undone. It was hard for Ezra to understand. Kanan was like a father figure to him, not to mention they shared a bond of Master and Apprentice. Whether it be the Jedi Order bond or a broken order Jedi bond, it was one that was inseparable and incredibly important for the training and development of both Jedi involved. With Kanan gone, Ezra was the last of a long line of incredible Jedi who made the ultimate sacrifice to save the galaxy and their students. Mace's act against Sidious almost resulted in the Empire never rising to power. The death of Depa came at her saving Caleb Doom, and the death of Kanan Jarrus resulted in the life of Hera, Sabine, and Ezra, which would have effects that Ahsoka and Ezra were currently unaware of at this moment in time. As they said their goodbye to his master, for the final time, they heard a cackling accompanied by the boom of thunder. Ahsoka and Ezra turned over to see Sidious opening up the world between worlds. The Dark Lord had studied this extensively, and found that the only way to open it is that if someone was inside of it. The Dark Side was forbidden from the world between worlds. Now that Ahsoka and Ezra were inside of it, he was able to use the darkness to open up a portal so he could see inside. He couldn't get inside, but he planned on changing that. Both Ahsoka and Ezra were caught off guard by the appearance of Sidious. While the Dark Lord was already victorious, he knew that the key to sustaining his power was through knowledge. He didn't know the future, but according to the texts inside the Jedi Temple on Coruscant, the means to achieving such information was accessed by this legendary portal. Ahsoka told Ezra to run, and so he did, both of them trying to escape Sidious as he used the Force to break in. Due to the evil nature of the dark side, the Force became as visible as Force electricity. The Jedi tried to resist it, Ezra and Ahsoka using the Force to protect themselves. Being that they were inside of a beacon of light, they were able to stop it. But this was the most powerful Sith Lord in the history of the galaxy. He pushed past their barriers. Ezra, being the youngest and least experienced, slipped first. Ahsoka ignited her lightsabers, and as she did, she surrendered herself to Palpatine. He latched onto her wrist and pulled her down the same way he did Ezra, and kept them stationary on the ground. His power was immense, and then he started walking closer to the portal, his hand slipping through, and then he himself following his hand. This was true power, and they stood at the edge of the pathway, still holding Ezra and Ahsoka still, looking around the vast landscape. He stepped forward and walked up to both Ezra and Ahsoka, thanking them for their sacrifice, before using the force to very simply hoist them up into the air and keep them suspended. His royal guards were stationed at the edge of the portal if they tried to escape, but that wouldn't ever happen. They couldn't get free from his grip. Sidious continued forward and looked into the vast landscape of the world between worlds. Instead of hearing Jedi, he was hearing Sith. He could hear Plagueis, Dooku, Maul, and Ventress. Their voices spinning around and he continued forward with pride. The two Jedi were left behind him. They couldn't escape. Sidious wanted knowledge, and he would get it. He walked forward looking at the catwalks that surrounded him. As he continued forward, he turned back to make sure the two Jedi were stationary. They were trying to communicate. So, he raised his hands and split them up, holding them over the pits of nothingness on the far side of the catwalk. He looked back and saw a moment in time begin to form in front of him. A smile crossed his face. It was a moment that defined his legacy as a Sith, when he killed Plagueis in his sleep. Perhaps not the most honorable way to do it, but Plagueis didn't have the vision to go to distance. Sidious did. He looked down at his former master as Sidious's blade was driven through his chest and he was extinguished. Palpatine continued on. He came across the betrayal of Mace Windu inside of his office. What a brilliant play by him. Sidious knew Skywalker would fall for it. What always made Sidious happy was how quickly Anakin fell into his control. Without even a second thought, he marched on the temple and killed thousands. Wonderful good old Darth Vader, doing his master's bidding. It was nice for Sidious to reminisce, but he didn't care. He marched forward and wanted to know what happened. Being that Ahsoka and Ezra were still alive, the future couldn't be changed. At this moment, at least. Sidious remembered reading that the future was always in motion, so he would always have to keep that in mind. He wanted to know everything. The first futuristic portal he came across was Thrawn's defeat at the hands of the boy. It truthfully impressed Sidious. He wasn't above giving credit to where credit deserved to be given. 
For the boy to defeat Grand Admiral Thrawn was admirable. However, depending on the events that followed, perhaps Thrawn would be worthwhile of a sacrifice. It would put Ezra Bridger out of Sidious's mind. If it meant another Jedi disappeared, then it meant one less threat to his rule. This was acceptable, even if it meant losing Thrawn. All in favor of Sidious's empire. Long live the Empire. The following event was the defeat of Tarkin inside the Death Star, an event that Sidious never believed he would see. Putting the pieces together, he figured that Tarkin must have usurped Krennic and then managed to lose the weapon. However, what became interesting was the fact that the leader was a boy, not much older than Ezra, if at all. In reality, technically, at this exact moment in time, Luke would be older inside the portal, but Skywalker was only a day younger than Ezra. It continued from there, because this kid was revealed to be Anakin Skywalker's offspring. That would be troublesome. At the end of all of it, he realized that Vader would betray him to save Luke. How pathetic. Sidious knew Vader wasn't a true Sith, it was just only a matter of time until it happened. But Sidious always prepared. He continued and followed along with his rebirth on Exegol. Balance was restored to the Force. Vader had died, and Sidious himself was nothing but a shell of his former self. The moment he essence transferred into the clone of himself, it began to decay. Turns out he was too powerful to sustain life in a dormant body. Another setback. Sidious watched the galaxy reshape itself, all the while being too arrogant to remember the past. An engagement with the return thrum would result in his death and the creation of the First Order, an operation led by Vader's grandson and a clone named Snoke. Sidious enjoyed how brilliant his plan was. He seduced Ben Solo as he did Anakin Skywalker. Those situations were different, but they both were against inexperienced masters. Kenobi was too loose with his student due to his arrogance, the same one that plagued every Jedi of his time. And as it turns out, Luke Skywalker was an intelligent Grandmaster, unlike Yoda. But what would said Grandmaster fear more than anything else? Creating the very thing he destroyed, so he used Ben Solo as that tool. Sidious, while embarrassed that he lost, was entertained by his brilliance. However, his joy came to an end when he watched the Final Order rise up and get betrayed. Turns out the key to the destruction of his empire, the First Order, and the Final Order was Luke Skywalker. His act against the Death Star, against Vader, and Sidious, and against the First Order on Krayt would be everything the galaxy needed to rally together. The Battle of Exegol wouldn't be a rebellion or a new republic versus an evil regime. Rather, the collective people of the galaxy inspired by Luke Skywalker's sacrifice on Krayt. Sidious was disgusted, but his fury didn't end there. The offspring of Leia Skywalker and Han Solo produced half of a dyad. Turns out the other half of said dyad was Sidious's own granddaughter. Palpatine did admire one thing about the situation. It was his genius when it came to his son, Dathan. The boy was probably the first non-Force-sensitive individual in galactic history. Everyone had the Force, to some extent. Most couldn't use it without extensive training. However, Dathan Palpatine had nothing. Literally just a fleshy being without anything. So he was able to escape and mate with a woman. The two of them creating Rey, his granddaughter. Dathan hadn't escaped from Exegol yet in this timeline. But Sidious would allow that to come naturally, no need to offset those particular events. Regardless, Sidious watched Rey defy him, and in a pairing with the Jedi of the past, unified with the Force to sacrifice her life to end his. That was troublesome. Sidious initially believed that he could use Rey as a potential apprentice or essence transfer host, but that didn't look feasible anymore. He realized that there was natural goodness about her, the same that went for Luke. These two individuals couldn't be allowed to let said goodness take control over them. Sidious needed to find Skywalker, and he needed Dathan to complete his journey to find his future wife. Sidious was at a crossroads here. Now he had access to every event in galactic history. However, what he noticed is that Ahsoka, aside from being integral to the return of Thrawn, had no influence over the events that transpired as of yet. And because Sidious knew that Ezra Bridger had a high ceiling, he'd rather allow Ezra to escape the world between worlds. Hopefully the events here wouldn't affect his desire to save his home world. Sidious staged an escape for Ezra, one of which he would break free from the world between worlds, and after Ezra escaped, Ahsoka would be captured. It went just as Sidious planned it to go. He quote unquote accidentally released them and they ran, Ahsoka falling behind to protect the future generation, just as any good Jedi would do. Ezra escaped and returned to Lothal. Ahsoka was captured and taken back to Coruscant. She would be used as a walker, a skywalker if you will to get into the world between worlds whenever he wanted. Just to test out his little experiment, he let the young Jedi from Lothal do as he was shown to do inside the world between worlds. The disappearance of Thrawn went the same way as was shown. 
Sidious had a lot of interest in this, and being that he got rid of the Jedi, he was willing to accept such a sacrifice for Thrawn. Because even though it took a couple days to happen, he had a self-realization. If he gave those rebels hope, then he could control their outcome. He could control every outcome from this point forward. Also, as a side note, Sidious knew Vader would sense Ahsoka, so she was kept inside of a restricted Mandalorian sarcophagus, just outfitted with Sith markings and such. It essentially would do everything the Mandalorian iteration did, but it would also restrict essences and poison her. Ahsoka would never die, but she would be in a constant state of intoxication. As Sidious watched, Thrawn and Ezra lost at the Battle of the Thal, and despite the Empire pulling away from the planet, it was all to Palpatine's demands. He then decided to pull Tarkin from the Project Stardust. He didn't want the planet-killing weapon to crumble. The super laser technology was being utilized on Exegol for his final order. Sidious needed that tech to survive. And while Tarkin was a loyal servant, he was destined to fail, so instead of allowing him to fail, he put Director Krennic in that position. Krennic was much more hardy than Tarkin, and he was probably a lot more unorthodox considering he wasn't close to Palpatine in the way that Tarkin was. However, he wouldn't do something as stupid as Tarkin did. Krennic didn't have the influence to, so he was as simple as a rabid cur. His uses were nothing more than temporary. As Sidious noticed, the direct involvement of Krennic wouldn't just save the super weapon, but it would allow the rebellion to crumble and become fractured. In the coming months after the Battle of the Thal, there'd be an organized attack at the base of Scarif. Even though Krennic was put in charge, it didn't directly change the Alliance motivation to attack the weapon or get the plans for it. Krennic did destroy Jetta City, and he did destroy the base of Scarif, but he very quickly settled down and kept the weapon hidden. Vader was also able to track down Leia at Tatooine, where Luke would be brought into the fray. Sidious knew that at some point after Scarif, Anakin Skywalker's offspring would become part of the fight. With Krennic keeping the Death Star out of the situation, it helped Luke's direct interference stay at a minimum. The Battle of Scarif was a huge loss for the Rebellion. While Bear Lagana eventually got the Death Star plans, it would also come at the cost of his daughter, Leia being killed inside the Death Star by her own father. As Bail was trying to piece together the Alliance, the Senate was dissolved, which immediately put targets on his and Mon Mothma's heads. They were identified as enemies to the Empire, and they would be killed on sight. Bail might have had the Death Star plans, but without a Death Star, he couldn't do anything with these plans. Ben tried to help by suggesting alternative means to fighting, but Bail was trying to reunify the Alliance, which was fractured with the confirmed death of Admiral Radis. Sidious was very pleased. The Alliance was on his heels, but something needed to be done, so instead of allowing the Alliance to have hope, he would draw them out. By this point, Sidious figured out how things were going to go. Vader was the chosen one, and his children were chosen ones, so naturally, he'd make sure that the light would die out. Vader was his pet, and he would continue to be that, but instead of allowing Vader to betray him, he would allow Vader to kill Luke. The boy was the only one that could possibly save Vader, so if he allowed Vader the opportunity to do it himself, he could further his descent into darkness. Sidious knew that Darth Vader wouldn't blame anyone other than himself like he did Batman, so Palpatine used the World Between Worlds to find the location that the Alliance would be destroyed at, and sure enough, it came at one of their hidden bases. It came about a week and a half after the loss of Scarif. Krennic was promoted due to his obedience, which bought Sidious even more loyalty from such a rabid cur and hungry Imperial officer. Though Sidious wasn't content, he needed the Alliance to be dealt with, so using his knowledge, he did what he did to Skywalker before the end of the Clone Wars, or in other words, he told Vader that scouts informed him that the remaining rebel cells were on Dantooine. Because Leia never had her homeworld threatened, she would never mention the location of the previously abandoned base, so the rebels were safe for a couple of hours. Lord Vader arrived with a multitude of destroyers, orbital bombarding the planet, killing generals and soldiers. Then Vader and his troops descended onto the ground to eliminate the rebels. There was a relatively sizable holdout. Ben Kenobi was one of them, and a very badly injured Luke Skywalker was too. But Vader and his elite troopers moved down to the surface and began a fire fight. The Dark Lord cut through rebels before fiercely engaging Ben Kenobi in a duel. Kenobi was much more focused on defending Luke, but in his old age he wasn't able to do that. Death troopers opened fire on the rebels and slaughtered them. Ben lost track of Luke, but he wouldn't ever see the boy again, being cut down by Vader in a swift strike. While Vader would never be the one to kill his own son, his leadership would directly lead to his son's death. Sidious was very quickly informed of Vader's successes at Dantooine, and he would be very pleased with the outcome. Using Ahsoka as an access point into the world between worlds, he'd be able to see what was to come. 
The future looked bright for him, but there was still a chance for the light to return. The Force desired balance, and that required the destruction of not just Sidious, but the Sith. As could be seen from the World Between Worlds, Vader would continue to be loyal to him. Sidious used the dark side to keep Ahsoka alive for the longest time due. She was the key to everything. Sidious became addicted to the World Between Worlds. He visited every day and learned new things being created across the galaxy. The Force was actively moving to try and stop Sidious, but he couldn't be touched. Instead of the Force propelling one or two from a selected bloodline to become chosen ones or individuals to bring balance to the Force, there are multiple outlets of this, some of them coming from former Jedi, others coming from other religions or Force users such as the Baron Dos Sages. The rest came from regular citizens who had very special children. The Empire had already done its purge of highly sensitive children and people, but there was a need to get rid of the newest ones. Palpatine couldn't have anyone coming for him. The sick irony of the world between worlds is that despite Sidious ensuring his legacy by not just defeating but capturing, enslaving, and sedating these new chosen ones, he's becoming more paranoid. He could still access the portal easily and use Ahsoka to get in, but he was beginning to question everything. There is no more Senate. He was able to be the sole ruler of the galaxy, but then he'd begin to think that Krennic would turn the Death Star on Coruscant, or perhaps Vader would kill him in his sleep, even though there was no evidence to that happening. The point being that Sidious couldn't stand how much he knew. Every time he did something, whether it be Director Krennic taking over the Death Star or Vader's troops killing Luke, a splinter timeline was born. The butterfly effect of everything he did was surreal. The future held secrets that he knew, but now because of so many futures he could see, and saw he didn't know which one was true anymore. Shortly after the death of Luke, Vader wouldn't kill him, but when Sidious executed a new chosen one by wiping out the first child across an entire city, Vader was going to be responsible for Sidious' death. However, that again changed due to the death of another chosen one. It was continuously a burden to remember what happened and what changed every time, till Palpatine's paranoia became a source of self-doubt for himself. Not that he didn't believe in himself, or believed that he was the greatest Sith of all time. That was no question, but he considered bringing Sith from other eras back to his own, to serve him. Truthfully, all these hypotheses about bringing back the dead seemed problematic. Vader was all he needed. As long as Vader continued to serve him, then there'd be no other issues. One thing that furthered the bond between Master and Apprentice was the fact that without knowing his children were around him, Vader felt completion after finally beating Obi-Wan in a duel. The dark side fully consumed him, now every ounce of Anakin Skywalker was killed. He killed Ahsoka on Mortis, and he killed Ben on Dantooine. His children were never born, and they were gone, and the light within him was gone as well. The only thing that could change that would be a potential for an adopted child, but that would never come, simply due to Palpatine ensuring that there was no possible way for Vader to betray him. What Sidious aspired was for absolute control over his empire, and he maintained it. Without Alderaan being destroyed, the alliances of the galaxy faded into obscurity. There were other movements that rose up, but none of them actually really had any potential to go anywhere. Sidious knew that all he needed was to ensure his legacy. Vader had done him well, but his biggest gripe with Vader is that he wasn't someone he could utilize. His body was too badly damaged. Sidious obviously wanted a younger, more outfitted body to work with, but that was not the case with Vader. As the years sped by, the Chosen Ones became extinct. Sidious was able to bring into his ranks a few trainees. All of them were hand-selected by Vader. Because the Dark Lord knew he couldn't keep Vader on a leash forever, he needed something to distract him. Ahsoka was still in constant agony, but she was living, and Vader was seemingly at a loss with all the Jedi gone. He couldn't do anything. There were no alliances to crush, no Jedi to kill, or really anything with any sort of action in it. So Sidious gave Vader a chance to do something, which was take a group of supposed to be chosen ones and turn them into an order of inquisitors. All these individuals had high midichlorian counts, but that didn't matter. Their purpose was to overthrow Sidious, but being that they were found at the age of infants and had their memories probed and removed, they would be nothing but warriors for the Sith. Sidious was very careful to select a group of younglings that would be trained by Vader and pledge their loyalty to Sidious. Obviously, Vader did have some thoughts of treachery, and he had no better opportunity to do it than now. But Sidious allowed Vader to do pretty much as he wanted. There was a war in the Outer Rim, and Vader was glorified as a war hero because he freed copious amounts of slaves. It just made him feel even more complete within the dark side. Training wasn't something he was as excited for, but it did the job. Sidious would show up when he needed to, but this task for Vader would take around 18 to 20 years. So, 
he'd be busy by himself with all these elite units, all of these units informing Sidious of his students' motives and teachings. Palpatine, on the other hand, brought his son home to Exegol and killed Dathan and Miramar. As it turns out, the wife had a bit of Force sensitivity. Not enough to be found or brought into the Jedi Order of old, but more than the average sentient. Sidious then had himself his granddaughter, the one he would use to become young again. Her training and upbringing was especially important to Sidious. All of his hard work and dedication led him to this moment, and as he started raising his granddaughter, he realized something. Rey would be the catalyst to the power he desired. As was becoming apparent, with these new chosen ones, many of them, like Luke and Leia, had an inherent desire to be kind-hearted. This was part of the reason Sidious wanted Vader to kill his son. It's because Luke at his age, which was 19, was too good of heart to be tamed. Sure, there was some darkness in there, but Sidious needed something to be instantaneous, like second nature. This new generation didn't need to be taught right from wrong. They had the inherent desire to be good, to have kind hearts, to be the opposite of Palpatine. This was the case with Rey, but as Sidious discovered with her training, is that even though she was radiating with the dark side, she could access the world between worlds without needing to use a scapegoat like Ahsoka. Speaking of Ahsoka, she was on the verge of death, being kept alive by Sith magic and science. It was only a matter of time until she would die painfully. So for the next 18 years, both Vader and Sidious would be busy. Director Krennic, who was now Grand Moff of the Empire, was currently ruling over the core, the Death Star stationed outside of Coruscant as a show of Imperial Bride. The second Death Star completed over the moon of Endor, and the former Jedi world of Ilum having been turned into Starkiller Base, the largest weapon in the history of the galaxy. Sidious had everything he needed, not to mention his final order on Exegol. His obsession with blowing planets up couldn't be tamed, and with three super weapons in the final order fleet, he needn't be worried about rebellions and such. Instead, his granddaughter was the optimal age, and the essence transferred into her, killing her soul and taking over her human form. As was predicted, due to her inherent goodness, he was able to use it like a shield and sneak into the world between worlds. His student Vader, on the other hand, had no clue that Sith could just get new bodies, and all signs were pointing to a final match between the Sith. Vader's students were all loyal to Sidious, simply due to his manipulation, similar to what he did to Skywalker, and what he would have done to Ben Solo had he been born. The world between worlds revealed that Sidious would have to fight Vader one last time. However, when Vader fought Sidious, he'd be at a severe disadvantage. Just like Dooku, a man who started in the light to only be consumed by darkness, Vader was struggling. He was pushing his 90s by this point. He's being held together by metal and the dark side, but he's truthfully struggling. When he saw Sidious with a new body, he'd be filled with rage, but in a tandem so similar to the fight between Anakin and Dooku on the Invisible Hand, Sidious and Vader would toil with each other, their blades clashing inside the throne room of the Death Star. Vader's students watching him dominate the physical battle, but lose when it came to pure mastery of the Force and the Saber. Sidious was always wise to keep the best tricks to himself, and finally in a younger, more agile body, he was able to move against Vader. Because Sidious was cruel, when he defeated his apprentice in a show of mastery, he told him that he was the best apprentice a Sith could ever ask for. However, his lineage did more than enough to further the expansion of the Sith. The husk of Ahsoka was revealed to Vader before Sidious propped up holograms, one of Leia's death at the hands of Vader on the Death Star, and the second one of the death of Luke at the hands of Vader's troops on Dantooine. Everything was explained to his student before he executed both Ahsoka and Vader in one swift strike. The students Vader trained were all horrified of the power Sidious held, but he knew what he was doing. To ensure he kept control and loyalty, he split them up, requesting that they create offspring, and made sure they had power. Each of these Sith would remain loyal to Palpatine, because Vader was defeated by him, and Palpatine gave them everything they desired, power, lineage, and control. He kept them all in check, all the while returning to his beloved world between worlds. Sidious' legacy wouldn't end with Rey, but he would continue doing the same as he had with Dathan. Truthfully, after Dathan escaped, Sidious had more clones similar to him, who were able to escape, thanks to Sidious. Some of them never reproduced, and others tried to rally rebellions, but none of them could do anything. The Empire was stronger than ever before, and with knowledge of the infinite possibilities ahead of him, Sidious would remain the one and only Sith Lord for an eternity, ruling his people as the true Sith Lord he was always meant to be. And that, my friends, is our Dark Side ending. Again, special thanks to Galvin Gaming, Tristan, Mandalore, Sewell, and 1767, 
Darth Revan, Grand Lady Bane, Sky Guy, Penguin, Colin Rooney, Shark Midori, RJ38, Nick, Michael Erlanger, The Last Jedi, Apollo, We Was 670, Annika Stank Runner, CT7567, Toaster Oven, Ops of Oz, Darth Knox, The Eternal Padawan, Joshua Tem, Johnny Deguin, Sin Skeleton, Jedi Sloth, Mr. E, Gamer, Lord Kallig, the only Slay 66, Mad Mad Studios, Anakin 003, Lord Draken, Ford is like Star Wars, Erebus, Rex the Wolf, The Man Three First Names, Dark Saint 46, Baron Joshua, and Lord Deadwing for supporting channel. Smash that like button if you want to see more, whatever the hell that was. Check out the Patreon, I don't know. Anyways, let's talk about the story. So, the essence of this is, I've always been curious about what cities could do with the world between worlds. And honestly, he would just be unstoppable. Like, I think the idea of him becoming paranoid and becoming like even more of a mastermind because of his paranoia was fun to work with, and I thought like him consistently progressing to this point where he's like almost insane because of so much power that he has, but also the infinite knowledge he has. And I thought the idea of him kind of using Rey as this like scapegoat or this cover to kind of shield himself to go in because the Force created her to be like this inherent goodness to stop Palpatine, using that inherent goodness to break into the world between worlds without an actual Jedi was kind of fun to work with. So I hope you all enjoyed. I love you all, spread the love, and always remember my friends, may the dark side be with you.